Welcome to this video on how to install and configure the Filer Windows desktop client. There are a number of ways that you can distribute uh, the desktop client to the end users. Uh, in this case we're just going to go through the manual way of doing it. So first of all bring up a browser and log into your Filer environment. So to get to your home page your administration should have given you a uh, host name, um, most probably something along the lines of filer.mycompany.com. Uh, log in, typically this will be with your normal credentials that you use to log into the network. The branding on yours may be different than I've got here by the way. So let me just log in as me. And you may have this banner that comes up prompting you um, about the desktop application. Uh, you can um, uh, turn that off. So to download the desktop application just go to your name in the top right, click on it and you've got an option here to download the Filer desktop app. Um, we're looking at this in the old uh, UI which is still available most people are using. Uh, there is a new UI at the moment that you can uh, use so if you're using that um, then on the home page you've just got an option here to uh, download um, the Filer client and you've got an option here you can just click to download that. It should recognize here what uh, client needs to be downloaded so you don't have to pick and choose. Let's just go back to the old interface and I'll show you that working here so we'll take the option download Filer desktop app and here I've got a uh, number of options for uh, downloading clients, so Linux client, I've got the plugin for Office and Outlook, um, Mac client, and here are the Windows clients, so I'll just download the 64-bit Windows client. And um, I'll run that after it's uh, been downloaded. So I may need to click on that just to bring that up. And here uh, I need to just click on next. I need to accept terms of the license agreement. Click next. Uh, typically I'll leave that at the uh, directory that's prompted the default. Click next and then install. What you may then do is just have a prompt uh, pop up saying uh, do you want to allow uh, this app to make changes and of course we do so click yes and then that will go through uh, the install process. So once this is complete there are a few things that we need to uh, do to uh, complete uh, uh, the configuration. We obviously need to uh, tell it what our username and um, password are to log in. We also need to specify uh, the server address for the filer environment. And then there's some other things we can set as well if uh, the administrator uh, has let us uh, uh, make those changes. So things like how long to keep files that uh, we've offline. So we can automatically clean up those files and uh, remove them from the local drive. They're not uh, lost or anything because of course they're still on the network server but it just gives us uh, a method of um, keeping our local disk clean. So that's finished. Let's just click on finish. and then we'll be prompted for uh, our information. So the username, let me just put in uh, my username here. So this is my network um, user credentials that we're going to be putting in. So password 
um, I can uh, check uh, remember password here so I don't need to type it in each time and then on the server URL it's just going to be the same or normally will be the same as the web interface that we uh, just uh, logged into so in my case that's filer.demo.live and then I can click login and that's it set up just it's got this icon here you can see with the uh, two overlapping documents and if I just click on that that will bring up my um, filer environment um, quite often what I will do is first thing having come in here um, I'll just right uh, mouse click on uh, the quick access and just say pin the current folder to the quick access so you can see there that's just added filer in there so I can easily get access to it so you can see here I've got my files uh, that's going to be my home drive uh, which uh, is synchronized down and then I also have access to uh, my network folders um, and we have access to um, the data there and shared areas so let's just have a quick look at some of the configuration options that we've got um, if I uh, right mouse click on this um, I've got uh, the option here to open file a console so if I just open that up so you can see it's picked up information about me um, and downloaded that uh, uh, things like the maximum desktop sync size um, may have been something different than the 50 megabytes which is the default we've got here uh, your administrator may have set something different if I just go to general um, I can set it so we don't start microfocus filer at login no, normally you most probably uh, would want to on the storage size side if um, I can specify um, if I don't want to use the default folder that it's picked I can store my filer information somewhere else and there's that uh, option I talked about about deleting offline files after so many days uh, you may not be able to modify that if your administrators lock that um, but uh, uh, it doesn't really matter if those files are removed if I go into Word and say open recent documents and open up that file it will still uh, open it up for me it's not as if the file has been uh, lost there uh, and then on the application side um, it may be and I may have different options here depending on what the administrator has got um, the administrator may have blocked uh, certain applications or only allowed certain applications to dynamically download files uh, from the system and we'll talk a bit about that uh, in the um, uh, client demonstration video uh, I then have options for recent activity and system alerts if there were any here let's just close that down and that's installing the desktop client on Windows thank you for your time I hope you found this video useful